Cormont, uh, these reforms and mixed ownership. Jack Perkowski, managing partner at JFP Holdings, is live for us in Beijing. Uh, good to see you again, sir. Let me start with Sinopec. Uh, so they're kind of doing it already. How's that going? No, I think it's going very well. I've talked to a number of the investors, and uh, they seem quite happy, uh, you know, with the transaction. I think that there's a lot of capital out there that would like to invest in the Chinese economy, and 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 you know this offering by Sinopec gave uh, a lot of investors an opportunity to invest a substantial amount in a key part of China's economy. So I think it's uh, so far so good. Uh, there's no shortage of critics out there, but I mean there is one good point that I've heard being brought up is that you know the, the government state-owned enterprises have a certain culture. Purely private companies have a very different culture. And to have those two cultures of, of leadership and money and ultimately management and workers, that's a challenge, right? No, it's a big challenge. And, you know, and, and, and changing a state-owned culture to one that's more like, uh, you know, a private culture is going to take a lot, uh, including, you know, mixed ownership is clearly a first step. But, you know, there are other steps. I think, you, you, know, you know, very good, uh, great boards of directors have to be created because shareholders really influence management through the board. They don't do it directly other than by buying and selling shares. I think an independent uh, professional management class has to be created. Today, you know, the head of a state-owned enterprise might be the, you know, governor of a province tomorrow. And then finally, have to put in, uh, you know, incentive systems that really compensate management for, uh, for building shareholder value. So it's a, it's a package of things that are needed to move two cultures closer together. And, and you can't ignore the profit equation as well, right? Because traditionally, state-owned enterprises sort of have a, um, a range or a cap in terms of profit, whereas private businesses, if you and I were to start a business, there's no maximum to how much we can make. No, and I think, you know, the whole job of management is to create uh, shareholder value. And usually, you know, that's, uh, you know, one way or another, that's a big function of the level of profitability of the company. And so clearly, you know, and that could, you know, that could be at odds, you know, with, uh, you know, an ownership structure that may have uh, other objectives, uh, you know, in addition to profit. So, you know, that profit incentive is very important. One of the reasons why the, the government is doing this in large part isn't just about the money, it's also about bringing in outside talent, right? Individuals or, or entities that have outside expertise that they may not have inside. How big of an incentive is that? Oh, it's a huge incentive. I, you know, I think that, uh, you know, there, look, there are a lot of overseas uh, Chinese that have, uh, that have been trained and educated in various parts of the world that would like to come back to China and, uh, and would like to work in, uh, in the big, you know, uh, you know companies. And, and obviously, the state-owned companies are the largest in the Chinese economy. But, you know, maybe they just don't want to come into a state-owned culture. But if you know, if they see the state-owned companies changing into something that's more akin to what they would, you know, see at a private company, that's going to be attractive. Also, you know, many companies, you know, Chinese companies are now attracting uh, foreigners, non-Chinese, that have expertise in particular areas. That's certainly going to be an incentive. We, we've seen this done in the past, especially with the banking system, you know, at Basically, I mean, they, are, they were state-owned enterprises, although they're now funded a lot by private capital, in large part thanks to the public capital markets. If you're watching this show, you might not have an extra $200 million to do a private deal, but you might be able to buy shares in a company. This whole going public bit, how's that going to work? Well, I think that would be very positive. I think on a longer-term basis, that's going to be very positive for China's stock markets. I mean, you know, essentially, uh, you know, a lot of uh, individuals in China, I think there's a growing number of foreign uh, individuals and institutions would like to invest in the Chinese economy? That's a question I get all the time. They say, Jack, we like what's going on in China, but how do we invest in it? Obviously, the stock market is the best way to do that. So the deeper the stock market is, the more variety there is in terms of good companies, the better that's going to be for the overall uh, you know, marketplace. So I, you know, I see that being very attractive. And clearly, as more and more, you know, SOEs are owned in large part by public shareholders, you know, the pressure to do what we talked about before, which is to, to maximize profits, is going to increase, which I think, again, will be good for those companies. I, I think there's been a, um, 
you know, an ongoing fear that the more reforms you make means potentially merging companies together, uh, bringing private investors, and they're going to want to focus on profits. And in large part, that also means if you're focused on profits and efficiency, that means a lot of layoffs, potentially millions and millions of layoffs. Have you heard from the people on the ground what the impact that might be? Well, you know, in reality, uh, you know, a, a lot of the employment in, in a country like, well, in, in, you know, in any economy, including China, is really done, you know, by the small and medium enterprises. Uh, you know, even in the United States, the large companies don't really add to the employment, uh, you know, situation. Uh, you know, it's really the SME. So I think a lot of that slack can be taken up by, uh, you know, by the smaller companies, the new companies that are growing. And that's why, in concert with the reform of the state-owned enterprises, it's important that China, you know, do what it's doing, which is to try to get more capital to the SMEs and to the, uh, and to the private companies. So I think you really need to have both of those initiatives working at the same time to, you know, to achieve the overall objective. All right. Chuck Burkowski, good to see you. Thank you for uh, starting us off Good here. to see you.